In our last lesson, we learned that in order to say figures are congruent, we have to show that all the corresponding parts are congruent. So I think you're going to like this lesson because what we're going to learn today are some quicker ways to show that triangles are congruent other than having to show that all the corresponding sides are congruent and all the corresponding angles are congruent. So perhaps you'll actually like these theorems because they're going to make your life easier. So we'll go through this and then I think it'll be easy for you to come back and write down your essential question and summary. So please be sure to do that after each lesson. It will help you if you'll do that. Okay, the first theorem we're going to learn is the side, side, side congruence postulate. Sorry, I might interchange postulate and theorem, but this is a postulate and we abbreviate it SSS. So when you use that as a reason in your proof, you can certainly just put SSS. All right, and what it says is that if three sides of one triangle are congruent to three sides of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So I know if side MN is congruent to side QR and side MP is congruent to side QS and side NP is congruent to side RS. If I know all that, then I can say the triangles are congruent. So MNP would be congruent to triangle QRS. And don't forget, your order matters. So make sure that you're lining those congruent parts up as you write your congruent statement about the triangles. Okay, and then we have the side angle side congruence postulate, and we abbreviate that SAS and it says if two sides and the included this is very important the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of a second triangle then the two angles are congruent well it's important for us to know what included angle means included angle just means it's got to be between the two sides that are congruent so if you look here PQ is congruent to WX and QS is congruent to XY. If I know that and then I know that the angle in between those two congruent sides, the two angles are congruent, then I can say by side angle side the triangles are congruent. So PQ is congruent to WX, angle Q is congruent to angle X, QS is congruent to XY, then triangle PQS is congruent to triangle WXY. Side angle side. All right, another postulate, angle side angle. ASA as you might expect. And it says if two angles and the included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So look at my two triangles here. If angle A is congruent to angle D, if side AC is congruent to side DF, and if angle C is congruent to angle F, then I know that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. And be careful because this side has to be included. It has to be between the sets of angles that are congruent. All right. So there we go. Three postulates to help us prove triangles congruent. I think we'll have one more coming up here. So let's go to the next page. And then, of course, we'll get right to doing proofs. All right, we have the angle-angle-side congruence theorem. I believe your notes probably say postulate, but this one is the only theorem of the bunch. So please go ahead and correct that on your notes. And, of course, we abbreviate that AAS. If two angles and a non-included side of one triangle are congruent to two angles and the non-included side of a second triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So in this case, we have angle A congruent to angle D. We have angle C congruent to angle F. We have side BC congruent to side EF. 
then I can say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So I've got the angle, I've got another angle, and then I've got the side, non-included side. Remember, if I were using angle, side, angle, I would have had to have side AC being congruent to side DF. So this is different. Don't get confused on the two. All right, so be careful. There are no angle, angle, angle. If I show that all the corresponding angles are congruent, that doesn't tell me the triangles are congruent. Why don't you think about that for a minute, and we'll talk about it in class tomorrow and see why. Why is that not a congruence postulate or theorem? And also, I don't have an angle, side, side triangle congruence postulate. Perhaps we should write this another way. We don't have a side, side angle. Maybe that looks better. So those two cannot be used to prove that triangles are congruent. All right, but we got four we can use, so let's just give it a whirl. All right, we're going to do this proof here. We got our statements. I have a few proofs in this lesson, so we may not do them all in this video. I may save one of them or two to do as a warm-up in class. We'll see how the time's running. Okay, so what do we know? Oh, what are we given here? Oh, it's not listed, but my triangles are marked. Typically, this should have been listed as given, but since my triangles are marked, I'm going to say, what do I have? I know that DE is congruent to JK. I know that DF is congruent to JL. And I know that FE is congruent to LK. All that's given. Boy, this one's easy. It's a two-stepper. So if I know all that, then I know that triangle DEF is congruent to triangle JKL by the side, side, side congruence postulate. And it is okay if you just put SSS. Boy, you hope for one that easy on the quiz, don't you? Yeah. All right, let's see what we have here. Statements. Reasons. By all means, if you want to pause here and do this one by yourself and then come back, you do that. I'm going to talk on through it. So what are we given? Well, once again, our given, we're going to have to take it off the figure. So we know that TY is congruent to XY. And I'm also given there that SY is congruent to WY. And I know that because my triangles are so marked. So we'll say that's given. All right. Now, maybe we're thinking side, side, side. How could I possibly determine that side ST is congruent to WX? Don't think I can. Oh, how about this? I've got angles 1 and 2. They're not labeled for no reason, right? I know they're congruent, don't I? Let me just write that down. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And how do I know that? Because they're vertical angles. And the vertical angles theorem tells me so. Guys, please remember when you're doing these proofs, they're not going to label angles for no reason. Like these angles are labeled 1 and 2. If you didn't need to use that information, there's a very, very good chance it wouldn't be provided to you. Okay, so now what do I have? Ah, looks like I have side, angle, side, right? So I think I can go right ahead and say triangle SYT is congruent to triangle WYX. 
by the side angle side congruence postulate. Okay, not too bad. Let's see what we have next. Here's another one. Oh, this one's really easy. Why don't you pause and do this one? Do this one here and come right back. Okay, that was another easy two-step proof there. They gave me everything. I didn't have to figure out anything. They gave me two sets of corresponding sides that are congruent, and then they gave me the corresponding angles, so I can just hop right in there and say those two triangles are congruent by the side angle side congruence postulate. All right, let's see what we have here. Can we prove that triangle WYZ, so this bottom one here, can we prove that it is congruent to ZXW? So this one right here. I bet we can. And we're going to just go ahead and do this as a proof. If not, it's going to really turn into a paragraph proof anyway. So we're just going to put our statements and our reasons. And let's see what all we're given here. They are giving me that WX is parallel, because I can see the little arrows on these. WX is parallel to YZ or ZY. And they're also telling me that those two are congruent, I think. Are they? Yes, those are also congruent. WX is congruent to ZY. That much is given. Okay, so what if I do this? So that, that side in the middle, they share a side, right? They share that side, WZ. So why don't I say, and you got to be careful, got to be very careful here. When we're looking at triangle WYZ, then I got that middle side right there. So I'm going to say ZW it's going to be congruent to, and if I go around this triangle, let me do it with black, Z, X, W, then when I come back around, it's going to be W, Z, right? Be very, very careful with that. We have to name those in the correct order, all right? Look at it again, and look up here. If I'm talking about Z, W in the first triangle, Z, W, I got Z first, W second. Then when I'm going this way, I've got W first, Z second. So I have to be very careful that I write this properly. So instead of saying Z, W is congruent to itself, I got to say it's congruent to W, Z. And instead of being the reflexive property of congruence, that's going to be the symmetric property of congruence. If you don't understand what I'm talking about here, by all means, put yourself a little note to ensure that we talk about this in class next time. Okay, so what do we have now? So we got the, I'm just going to put a little zigzag sign like that to show that that's congruent to itself. What else do I, I got two sides, two sets of corresponding sides. I can't figure out a way to find that WY is congruent to ZX, so I think what I need is an angle. Well, there must be some reason that they've told me these lines are parallel or some conclusion I can come to because of this. How about this? How about if I say this angle right here is congruent to this angle right here? Can I do that? I believe I can. And what is that statement? We're going to say angle Y, angle Y, Z, W is congruent. So I got to go that side. So I got to go X, W, Z. Order does matter. Be very, very careful. 
And how do I know that? Because they're alternate interior angles. So alternate interior angles theorem. Okay, and now I have it, right? I have it. I've got side, angle, side. So I know that triangle WYZ is congruent to triangle ZXW by side, angle, side, congruence postulate. That was a good one. Okay. We have a couple of practice, and then there are two more proofs. I think I will let you do these proofs, and I will just put the solutions up. So let's do these, and then you can pause and work on those proofs. All right, let's decide whether enough information is given to prove that the triangles are congruent. If there is enough information, state the congruence postulate. Well, let's see, PTQ. There's not enough information given. Um, angle 1 and 2, angles 1 and 2, may look like, you may think for a second, oh, those are vertical angles. But they're not vertical angles because if you look at this here and this here and this and this, those are not opposite rays. So I can't say that 1 and 2 are congruent. So there is not enough information here because they only have two sets of corresponding sides. All right, how about this one? I've got CMG and I've got ZMG. Ah, I know that MG is congruent to itself, so there is enough information there. And what I would be using is the side, side, side congruence postulate. Okay, everybody see that? How about these? Is it possible to prove that these triangles are congruent? All right, I know I've got congruent angles because the right angles theorem tells me that these two are congruent. I know that this side here would be congruent to itself, but that's all I have. There's some corresponding, one set of corresponding angles and one set of corresponding sides. So, no, nope, I don't have enough. No matter what it looks like, it looks like I got congruence there, but there's not enough information to prove that. All right, and this one here I definitely do because I've got two sets of corresponding angles and I could say that RQ is congruent to QR by the symmetric property of congruence. Therefore, I would say yes. And let's go ahead and write this congruence statement. Triangle PQR is congruent. I don't know why my pen is so wobbly there. Triangle PQR is congruent to SRQ. And what would that be by? Angle, side, angle. All right, PQ. Let me check out my sides. PQ and SR. QR and RQ. Yep, so I have my congruence statement done correctly. Okay, guys, this is where I told you because we're about, we're approaching 20 minutes on this video, so I don't want to take it that long. I want you to pause here. I want you to attempt to do these next two proofs, and you can come back and I'll have the solutions up for you. Okay, here's this first proof. I wrote down my given all in one step. I left out my little triangle symbol here, so be sure that you add that to your notes. All right, and once I write down the given, because WY is parallel to XZ, WY, XZ, if I use this as my transversal, I can say that angle YWZ is congruent to angle XZW because those are alternate interior angles. Could I have done these two angles? Could I have picked this one and this one? I sure could have. It really doesn't matter. I could have used those two angles also. And then, of course, I have to say that the shared side, the shared side right here, is congruent to itself. 
and I've got to use the symmetric property of congruence. I can't say WZ is congruent to WZ because that would be out of order. You have to respect the order. All right. And then finally, once I get that done, I've got those two triangles being congruent by angle, angle, side. Remember with angle, angle, side, the side does not have to be included. All right. This last proof, I started to do it, and then I decided this would really be a great warm-up activity for us to do. So why don't you just hold off on this one, and we'll just work on this one together first thing tomorrow in class.